Welcome to Spirit School. I'm your mentor, Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. In this podcast, I share honestly all I have learned about the mediumship and spiritual development journey. My intention is to normalize these conversations, to make way for a more confident, clear, and connected wave of lightworkers, serving the world of spirit with an open and joyful soul. Welcome again to Spirit School. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Spirit School. I am excited to be here for another week, another podcast episode with you, and this one is more of a story. Whenever I'm teaching in my classes, I'm an experiential teacher, so I teach through my experiences that I've had. Um, And so one thing that I will say in my classes is, okay, kids, it's story time, (laughs) and I will teach through a story of an experience that I've had. That's why I call myself an experiential teacher. And this is what kind of episode that is. I am just simply sharing a recent experience I've had that was incredibly profound, deeply healing, and something I will never forget. So I want to bring that onto the podcast because I've always treated this podcast as also a place to document my journey. And it was stemmed from my development journals and my first development blog going all the way back to 2013. And so, yeah, I wanted to capture this moment and it's going to require me going back quite a bit. So in my first year of development, we did work closely with our spirit guides. That's something I teach in even the initiation, which we're just wrapping up our final round of my mediumship foundations program. And we're going to be rebirthing something new in January. And I share quite a bit through the teachings of the foundational model that I have for the initiation around meeting your spirit team, meeting your spirit guides that are here to help support you on your journey, even if you don't believe in them, even if you don't ever go through your whole life meeting them, they're still there and they're still guiding you. So it's a conscious choice to be able to connect into their energy and be conscious of that, you know, requests and getting some help and some guidance. Um, That's a very conscious exchange. But for people who are unconscious of this beautiful, and I think one of the most beautiful relationships you can have in this human experience Um, You know, they just don't get to experience it at the deeper level, but they still are guided and they still have a team supporting them and influencing them and inspiring them where they can, knowing we all have divine free will. But early in my development journey, we went through an exercise of going into a meditation and meeting our spirit team. Now, to this point, I had been aware of Skylar, my main guide, since I was seven years old, met him physically when I was seven, when I first started meditating around the same time of my mediumship development, Skylar made a grand reappearance and had a whole lot of synchronistic experiences with him. But the way he clairvoyantly has always presented himself to me has always been the same age as me. Even when I was a kid, he appeared as a kid. When I was 30, he was also 30. Now I'm 41. I see him as also being 41. He just seems to appear to me in a way that is very similar to me. But he's always looked very handsome, like just a little bit like Tom Cruise circa, you know, early Mission Impossible. And I think that's just the way he has always had his hair, just this like straight, darker, almost black hair. And so that has always really stood out for me. And me and Skylar's relationship goes without saying, it's all through this podcast. I have received some of the most profound um, direct and indirect messages from my guide. And there's no doubt I have in my mind that Skylar is there. Like of anyone, I'm like, you've been here since day one. I recognize you throughout my life. There's no doubts here. But in that first year, when I sat down to go through this meditation of meeting my mediumship guide, of course, I went in thinking like, well, of course, it's Skylar. I only have one girl only needs one guide, like pretty much putting my guide up on a pedestal, which is something I do not advise, but that was just my journey. And this was early days back in 2013. So here I am in this guided meditation and visualization in my early development years, And what do I get with this angelic looking woman spirit who comes forward and her hair always just stood out for me um, as being like big and wavy and like brown and red and blonde. Like it was, it's just beautiful and dimensional and she has the most serene energy to her. 
but I never heard her speak. She never spoke. And I could gather a name that started with V. And I actually referred to her as V for about eight years. Because I was like, I know it's not Vanessa, it's not Veronica, like it's not Victoria. Like I'm trying to go through all the V names, but it was it was complicated. It wasn't easy. And I'm not a big name medium either. I don't get a lot of names in my reading. So names haven't always been something I've, I've gone too far for. I know I have spirit helpers. A name is nice, of course. Um, but I, I see you there very, very clearly. And for about eight years... I never heard V speak, not a single time. But anytime I would go into a meditation, I would see her there. I'm like, all right, you're there. I'm happy you're here. Um, I can see you. Nothing to say. That's okay. And then eight years in, I was in this meditation. I was actually leading it in the Spirit School Collective, my membership. And the name popped in, Varaness, Varaness. And I wrote it down, Varanes, V-A-R-A-N-E-S-S. I'm like, what a unique name. And I Googled it. And all I could find was a small town in France named Varanes. There was no reference of a name named Varanes. Like, it's not common at all. Um, I've never, well, I've been to Paris once in my life. Never been to France, really. Toured around, but I went to Paris once when I was a kid for New Year's one year. And so I got that name Varaness and it came very telepathically for me. And so that was the first time I ever got anything out of this guide other than knowing of their presence. So around the same time I got the name Varaness, I was in a deep meditation and a third guide came through who right away I could see very clearly um, showed themselves to me in robes of some kind. They had a funny bald patch on their head. And I remember them saying, I'm a friar. And I'm like, what's a friar? Now I have a family in town here who I love called the friars, but it wasn't like that. It was F-R-I-A-R. And I was like, well, what's a friar? When I Google it, it's a, it's a type of monk or religious person. And they did have um, a bald patch on top of their head, some of them. And that's how I saw um, Joseph having his. And I was like, well, what are you here for? And he's like, I am here to teach you about peace. I'm like, peace? Peace was not something I was even really interested in back then. And I remember posing this question, would you prefer, I can't remember what I, I put it up against, but I was like, peace? or determination or something like that. And I remember thinking, why would I want peace? Like I'm on a roll. I'm ready to go. I'm like not thinking I needed any kind of peace or desired any kind of peace. I know better now. (laughs) This was a couple years ago when I was very gung-ho. I'm like building the practice and spirit school movement was going so well. I'm like, why would I want to slow down? Like, why would I want to learn peace? (laughs) I'm, I'm on a roll here. And Joseph came through with a very, very clear sign for me of his presence. And it was always, Skylar has his own sign for me, which is on my back. And and Joseph, I can see very clearly. And he taught me a very valuable clairvoyant technique that first time he appeared to me where I could actually hold very clearly a subjective clairvoyance imagery. Because if you've been with me for a while, you know, clairvoyance is something I've always struggled with. Very sentient, very claircognizant not so much clairvoyant and I'm always working on the clair audience. I would love to be a clair audience medium. And right now I'm just leaning into that clairsentience and that claircognizance and it comes through. Uh, but a praying one day to be a fully clair audience medium with clairvoyance, sure, sure, whatever. <laughs> but I got this beautiful lesson from Joseph on clairvoyance at that time. And through the next year, year and a half, Joseph was actually more prevalent in my experience than even Skylar. And even Skylar for the past two years has not been as round, as close as he was for the first eight years of my development. And so I got used to Joseph's presence and he would give me reminders to choose peace. I would feel his sign every time I would be faced with a situation. Am I going to choose peace or am I going to choose being right or am I going to choose powering through? And the truth is I haven't always chosen peace, to be honest with you. But the reminder is always there and his presence in my life has been very beautiful and I'm so grateful that he's here but my experience for the past few years has been mostly with Joseph and I sent Skylar here or there always a bit of a comfort for me but there seemed to be a bit of a change of guard a couple years ago so let's fast forward now to this past month in 
September, I started feeling a lot more ritualistic. Now in August, I went through the whole exercise of mapping out the whole spirit school year in the membership and, and going through the whole exercise of being inspired on like, you know, what monthly themes are we going to focus on? Like, how am I going to deliver content and teachings around these different themes? And it was my first time doing this in the collective because I typically just ride off my inspirations, but Virgo is like a plan. I'm like, I, I want to plan looking forward this next year because everything's expanding and growing. What is happening? And leading into October, our monthly theme this month is make it sacred, sacred ritual. And spirit came very clearly to me last month because I really didn't want to create all these hangups around my spirituality. I didn't want to have to light three candles and say these three words to be able to connect. I've tried to keep my rituals as simple and my spirituality as simple and, um, you know, easy as possible. And I think it can be simple and easy. And when spirit was inspiring me to start bringing more ritual back into my life, I said, but I don't need ritual to connect. They're like, no, you don't need ritual to connect, but ritual and the act of being in ritual can help you feel connected. That's for your human. Spiritually, you don't need all of this to connect with us, but in your human, it desires this ritual to connect into and that's the benefit of um you know adding ritual into your life so I started setting my alarm clock for 5 a.m every morning because I actually don't have a lot of free time you might be shocked to know but <laughs> two young kids business all this stuff I don't have a whole lot of free time to be ritualistic it's it's not a privilege I have and so I decided to set my alarm two hours earlier than normal so 5 a.m and just sit with spirit like I did my first many years of development. I didn't do a traditional sitting in the power. Um, I just sat with spirit. I just sat and I connected with my spirit first. And sometimes I would pray. Sometimes I would journal. Sometimes I would pull out cards. Other times I would use a pendulum. Um, but I would just devote that sacred time to connecting with spirit, my spirit and the world of spirit. So I decided to start bringing that back in about seven, eight weeks ago at the time of recording this. And it actually did not take long at all to start seeing more signs from spirit, hearing them more clearly, feeling their presence more clearly. My decision making felt like it was slowing enough to make conscious decisions, not so reactive. And overall, I was just feeling more connected to my spirituality. So it's been really easy to keep up with the four days a week, setting my alarm clock for 5 a.m. The three days that I'm not working and I'm off with the family, which is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, I don't set my alarm. I allow myself to just like roll with the day and it's where I'm the most flexible. But the days that I'm working on behalf of spirit, I wake up at 5 a.m., do what I do in candlelight. Um, you know, the dog greets me, the kids greet me. It's been a beautiful experience, a very beautiful experience. I wouldn't trade for anything, which is how come it's been easy to keep up. So we fast forward now to the full moon in Aries. I have been hosting monthly moon circles at Spirit School HQ now for a couple months and I don't do anything twice. So every time I'm envisioning the next moon circle, I'm having new inspirations come through. It's just really beautiful. And so this ritual was coming through for our moon ceremony that I knew would be connected. And I have to say that whole full moon in Aries experience was absolutely mind blowing to me. One, it was a beautiful circle. The most amazing people were there. You could feel the energy in the room. You could feel that connecting with one another is exactly what the people there needed. And it was a beautiful ceremony. I had a few collective members come up for it. And yeah, I, I loved every second of it. Every second of it. The ritual was powerful. The philosophies that came through, I felt were, were connecting for people. And they were definitely connecting for me. And then at the end of the night, I couldn't believe my luck, but I had two LA producers in my circle and I had mentioned that that day, um, the full moon in Aries, I got my contract from the TV producers for my pilot for a show, which I didn't know at the time was going to be titled Spirit School. Couldn't believe my luck and I was celebrating because I was bringing celebration into the circle and so these producers came up to me after they said, hey, um, you probably don't know this, but like we're from LA, we worked in an unscripted reality TV show. Like, do you need help? Do you need advice? Do you want us to look at the contract? Do you need like, you know, lawyers? They were just so, I couldn't believe my luck. I'm like, can you believe this? Like in Squamish, 
these people are here. And I think I mentioned this before, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but just to kind of like play out how magical this day was. And it seems like with Spirit School HQ, I have very significant things happening on very significant days. And this full moon in Aries wasn't very different. Um, and it was absolutely beautiful. So go home that night. And this is where the experience happens. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. I promise you need all this context though. And I was just feeling so grateful. One of the rituals that we did is I had people release what they didn't want to carry with them through the next cycle on a sage leaf um, or a basil leaf to be more specific. And so I said, you know, you're welcome to take these bay leaves home with you and burn them in your own safe way, or you can leave it here with our ancestor, which was in the middle of the altar, and I will in ritual burn it all later. So when I got home that night, I had, I don't know, about a hundred bay leaves to burn. And so I grabbed my big turkey cooker pan and I went out to my front deck and I lit the gas fire. I have a gas fire on the front deck and I lit a flame in my um, big pan and I slowly and intentionally through ritual and through intention started to ceremonially burn all these things that we were releasing and it was really powerful and I felt so seen and I felt so an in integrity in that moment and I felt so proud that everyone in the circle trusted me with all of these beautiful things that they were letting go of and I felt more integrity and more on purpose than I think I have felt in quite some time. It was just a beautiful night. And so the moonrise came up over the mountains outside of my bedroom and I have big gorgeous windows in front of my bed. So I decided to open the blinds, open the curtains and let the moon rays come in. And so my daughter was sleeping in my bed as she always does <laughs> and she always ends up there. And I just laid next to her just sitting in these moon rays and just allowing these moon rays. And then I caught myself in this flow of gratitude. And I was like, thank you, Aries full moon. Thank you spirit for allowing me to be of service. Thank you guides for supporting me in my journey. And I just found myself in this stream of gratitude. And then all of a sudden this tear started coming and it's tears without crying. It's tears without sobs. It's tears without any emotion that really brings up those tears. When I talk about these tears, because this has happened a couple times to me now, I'm talking about water leaving my body. It was the simple act of water being extracted from my body in the most beautiful way, wiping away these tears. And I knew what was happening at that time because every time I have that experience of laying there and tears leave my body without the crying, without the sobbing, without the thought that precedes the tears, I know I'm about to have an experience with an angel and it's happened only a couple times in my life and every single time it is so profound. So this time I knew better and I was like, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy this experience and for the next 11 minutes exactly I entered in this exchange with what I now recognize as Varaness the angel of compassion for me the angel of compassion as I was having these tears roll down and as this gratitude was leaving my heart this word compassion continued to come into my mind and I heard the angel of compassion the angel of compassion the angel of compassion and I was receiving this incredibly deep healing. And I knew I was receiving a healing. It was palpable. Every hair on my body was standing up. Every inch of my skin was emanating love, was receiving love. It was so profound. I have no better way to describe it other than a knowing that I'm receiving a healing and knowing that this is an angelic experience and hearing those words of the angel of compassion, the angel of compassion. And I kept thinking like, okay, I'm receiving a lot of compassion right now. And a lot of compassion is leaving my body right now. And I am someone who's pretty hard on myself. And so compassion is something I have been working on a lot in the past couple of years. And so I love that this came through as a healing. And then all of a sudden I could see her face. I could see her face, the face of Varaness. I could see the hair and I could see her so clearly. And I remembered a week before I was in a meditation and Varaness appeared to me and our heads touched almost like a Maori kiss and like our heads touched and our nose is touched and it was like this beautiful exchange I'm like there you are I never see you and then a week later she was like supersized 
in the sky in the mind behind my eyes and she was bigger than life and I could see her hair and her eyes and we again touch foreheads and I could hear Varaness, the angel of compassion, the angel of compassion. And I ended up having this moment where I could hear her voice for the first time in almost 10 years of her being in my awareness. I could hear her voice like singing compassion to me and her voice was just so silky and beautiful and penetrating and it wasn't even coming in my ears it was coming in my heart it was just this beautiful experience so knowing I was having my first real deeply profound experience with Varaness and she was becoming more of a character in my life I felt like there was a knowing taking place that there was another change of the guard and I had the sense of knowing that this next season of me working on behalf of the world of spirit will be centered in compassion and when I entered my readings last week, because I, I did, I, I opened up 10 sessions for my collective members, um, and I'm doing readings for the collective right now, um, they, they were very compassion focused, especially those first five. And I was really in that energy of this healing exchange that I had had. And so like I had this knowing and this healing that my work was going to be changing and being more compassion focused. Because as you probably know, my work has been primarily growing and building Spear School for the last little while. And so it was a very welcoming feeling. And I only know that the experience was 11 minutes because I had my phone on me and because I was taking a bunch of pictures. And I took a picture of my daughter in bed and then I laid down next to her and it only took less than 30 seconds to get into this deeply healing exchange with the Angel of Compassion. And... I could feel after a bit of time that the energy lifted and that the healing was done. And I opened up my eyes and I look at the, out the window and the moon is just about to leave my window. And I was like, thank you, full moon and Aries. I don't know what else I could even handle in this moment. I'm like, this moon is so radiant. She is so beautiful. I had to take a picture. So I grabbed my camera and I take a picture of the moon. And we know that the moon has like this inexplicable to me reason for not wanting to be captured but if you've ever tried to take a picture of the moon with your phone you know what I'm talking about the expectation versus reality and it was like these beautiful moon rays coming in so I took a picture of the window with the moon outside of it and I didn't have my glasses on me but I noticed something really blue in the window I was like did I just catch moon rays I was like can you catch moon rays I'm like I don't even know if I've caught sun rays and so I zoomed in on it and I was like, oh, that's a lot of blue light. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if I can capture that again. So I went to go take another picture, same place. I have all this time stamped too, by the way. And I take another picture, but the flash is on. I'm like, I can't take a picture without flash. So I take a couple and the flash is on. So I actually have to manually turn the flash off. And I start taking pictures of the window again, exact same place. All this happened within a minute. And I could not recreate or get this blue to come up again. And as I zoom into it even more, I could see that it's a blue light haze collection and it's blue and green. And I started thinking, I'm like, my gosh, I just captured an angel on my camera. I cannot believe I was able to capture an angel. And I literally wrote with that and I posted it to my close stories, um, my close friends list on Instagram, which is my membership. And I posted it the next day saying, I think I captured an angel last night. I had this beautiful healing experience and I captured an angel. And so my friend Julie Poole also works a lot with angels. She has written multiple books on angels and she works very closely with them. And I sent it to her. I said, I think I caught an angel on camera. And she messaged me back. She was like, Danielle, she's like, you caught the healing light. That is the color of healing, that green blue she's like I'm covered in shivers you actually caught the healing light that's what it looks like I was like oh I'll admit I was a little bummed out I was like I wanted to capture an angel like this being but it was a collection of light and I didn't tell anyone that and a week later I was talking to Sarah Rose who is our healer on staff here at um, spirit school she teaches on energy healing and she's running her program right now the intuitive energy healing certification course through spirit school so you know we were talking about other things and I said yeah I caught this angel on camera and then I didn't send her the picture or anything I said I don't know if I have the in me to tell the whole story but 
she sent me a message back and I didn't check it for almost a week, but she was sharing about this experience that she had where she saw this blue green light and she was describing exactly the light I captured. So then I sent her the picture. I'm like, this is the picture I caught. And she messaged me back right away. She was like, I am covered in shivers head to toe. I cannot believe you captured that. That is exactly the healing light I'm used to. So here I have two people who are known for their healing work. Now I'm a healer of sorts. I am absolutely a healer, but I don't do traditional healings per se. So here I am talking to two healers who do hands-on healing, energy healing, who are talking about this this blue green light that comes with this healing. And yeah, that's essentially what I captured on this picture. So I in the show notes, I'm going to find a way either there'll be a picture there or a link to a picture, but I want to share it with you because it is quite phenomenal if you ask me, especially considering I am, um, you know, took many pictures before and after nothing like it was caught. And then the other thing is I knew I had captured something. So I opened up my notepad and I took some notes because I, I'm a girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm just your girl. You know who I am. I'm about to take notes and capture this moment because every moment in my life is a teachable moment because I'm a teacher. And so I come capturing everything. I'm taking the notes. I'm, I'm capturing the phrases and everything that happened and I'm screenshotting the the pictures and I'm adding them into the notes and then I go look at my note and what time is it 11 11 p.m 11 11 p.m I'm like are you kidding me and I sent it to my friend Maxine and I look at the time stamp there and it was 11 11 and I was like wow okay 11 11 is everywhere and I remember driving home from the moon circle and, you know, going down the highway and about to go left onto my street and I'm parked behind this car whose license plate is literally 1111. And then the phone number on the taxi cab as I'm turning the corner is their phone number ends in 1111. So I got four ones there and I remembered that as I saw it was 1111. I was like, wow, okay. I saw like four ones on my way to burning all this basil and it was really, really profound. And then the next few days, I just could not get away from 1111 and 4444 and just these beautiful numbers that I was receiving. And I will tell you that for the next week after this healing, I needed to exercise so much compassion, like not just for myself, but for other people. And, you know, having some conflict with some people in my life and and just realizing how to choose compassion in that moment, because, you know, it wasn't personal and people weren't trying to hurt me. And, you know, it's just, they needed compassion in that moment. And so there has been so much exercising of compassion since I had this healing experience. And it hasn't even been two weeks. Typically, I don't talk about experiences this early as I try to gather my lessons and reflections fully. But I just feel like sharing this because I feel like somebody out there needs to hear it. I want to capture it. Um, I'm amazed by it. I'm always amazed by the world of spirit. I love working with spirit guide energy. Um, there's nothing like it for me, honestly, spirit guides, as far as I'm concerned, my philosophy on them is they are literally our best cosmic friends. Like they are our best friends on the other side. They are the ones who have seen us through lifetimes. We've supported them through lifetimes. Um, they know what we're doing here. They know the intentions of our soul even deeper than we are in our sleepy state here. And I don't take for granted the experiences I have with my spirit helpers. And I'm so grateful for them. And so I hope hearing this story does something for you. Um, I'm just capturing it, like I say. I wish that you could experience what I experienced and maybe you did have an experience that sounds similar to mine and maybe me sharing mine is something that brings some more light and awareness around what you experience. But if it's any encouragement to start adding more ritual into your life, if not, to connect, to feel connected and to feel connected to something. And it's quite simple and it doesn't take long. It just takes some heart and it takes some intention. And I know that, you know, one thing I say to people, I get this question every single year. They're like, how do you get back into feeling connected or how do you connect in again? And I always say the same thing. If I'm going through a season where I'm like focused on something other than my spirituality then one of the ways that I get back into my spirituality is researching angel miracles. I just start YouTubing, Googling, Redditing, um, miracles and angel miracles. 
And that is one of the quickest ways for me to feel connected and to get that sense of connection. And so all I simply did was set my alarm clock a little bit earlier and put some time aside to connect to my spirit first and foremost. And then, you know, it was a bit clunky and it wasn't, you know, it wouldn't make for great TV or a movie, but just being so simple in my practices, just pulling out my pen and paper, writing down my feelings, setting my intentions, um, asking spirit for inspirations on some things. Even sometimes it was class prep. And I know that every single time I focus on devotion, because that's essentially this, what this is, it's a devotional practice. Every time I set my intention around devotion, within a week, I start to experience really profound spiritual experiences. And so it's always worth it. So if this is an encouragement for you to make it sacred, make that cup of tea sacred, make that nature walk sacred, make that next dog walk sacred sacred. I wonder in that sacredness and in that energy of intentionality, what your guides and your spirit helpers and your ancestors may try to inspire you on. And I hope that through hearing the story, you are able to sense that energy of compassion. And if you need another angel to connect into or another light being to bring into your life, maybe you feel inspired to bring in the angel of compassion into your life because Compassion is beautiful and what I experienced in that healing is something I hope everyone gets to experience while they're here. So thank you for another episode of Spirit School for listening in. I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead and we will see you next week on the podcast with another topic. Are you looking for the next steps in your development journey? Check out the Spirit School Collective monthly development circles, monthly lessons and masterclasses taught by me, and a development vault with over 200 workshops, classes, and experiences ready to go. See you in Spear School.